Hey there. Jin Hao 51, oh gee, what you know. Jin Hao 51, like a 51, but no. Is there anything I cannot do? Yes, rapping is one of them. Okay, I will never do that again, I'm sorry. Uh, Jin Hao 51A. I wonder what the A stands for. Um, here we have two pens, very kindly, sent to me by a viewer, which I always appreciate. Two 51s. Obviously, any pen lover will tell you, look at this from a distance, Parker 51, yeah? Looks like a Parker 51, is not exactly the same, the clip is not proper, this is not what a 51 clip looks like, but the overall design, that's 51-esque. One has a hooded nib, 51-like, the other one does not have a hooded nib. Fun stuff. I'm going to uh, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, then I shall do a writing sample, and then finally I will tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about this Jin Hao 51A. Um, legend tells of the Dark Lord Sau no, legend tells of a Parker factory in Shanghai. And um, there are a lot of Chinese pen companies now that make pens that are very much like the Parker 51. And I don't know if they use the equipment from that Parker factory in Shanghai or whatever, but I'm, I'm sure there is some sort of correlation there. And we have seen the Hero, of course. Um, uh, Hero makes a pen uh, that, that is... Um, uh, definitely pretty much a clone of the Parker 51. They also make a jumbo. Um, these are very, very close to the original Parker 51s, including the arrow-shaped clip. Now, Jin Hao did it a little differently because they don't have an arrow-shaped clip, but the barrel is definitely a 51-style barrel. Before I do anything else, uh, let me just show you a size comparison. This is a Twisby 580, and these are the Jin Hao 51s. So, I would, I mean, I have held 51s, and I would say they are very close uh, in, in shape and feeling to, to these pens. You can find these on eBay. Uh, I, I did a quick check. I found a couple for under $5, so these are way cheaper than a 51. I mean, a 51 depends a little bit on the condition, the rarity of the, the finish, but I would say something between $120 and $140 is not exceptional. Um, so there is that. Interesting thing with this one, uh, this specific model, is that you have the choice of a hooded nib, so this is very Parker 51-like, or a non-hooded nib, uh, which is not at all 51-like, right? So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen for you. Uh, there is this thing which some people call the jewel, and other people don't call it the jewel, and if you do call it a jewel, they threaten to beat you up. It doesn't matter, there's a thing on top of the cap. Then there is this clip, a Jin Hao style clip. It has the Jin Hao logo right there. And then it has this ball. And this is a pretty stiff clip. But usually, if it has a ball at the end, it's fairly easy to use and put into pockets and pen pouches and such. It says Jin Hao right there on the cap. And then at the back here, it's a little hard because of the reflection. Um, but it says 51A. And they both are 51A, even though one is not that one is a B and one is an A because one is hooded and the other is not. Um, they, they are both called 51A. Then you have the barrel, plastic, uh, with the little hole in the back. We can uncap this pen and then you have the section. In this case, with the hooded nib, um, this part is transparent. A little hard to show you, but you can sort of see the ink level. It's not very clear, but you can see it. And the pen comes with this Lamy style converter. I call this Lamy style converter and then half the world explodes. But quite simply, guys, it is a Lamy style converter because this is flat, just like on a Lamy converter. Period. So there is that. Of course, the end of the day, it's just a converter. There's also this non-hooded version. Same thing, same type of converter, but now with a non-hooded nib, which has the Jin Hao logo on it, and it's actually imprinted F for fine, which is quite nice. I don't think there is a whole lot more to say about these pens. Um, 
So let's do a writing sample. I'm going to start with the non-hooded version. It's a fine nib and the ink is a blend from a friend. Um, a blend from a friend. That could be a great song title. It's a recreation of Mont Blanc Racing Green. Okay. I'm not going to name this friend because I don't want the friend to somehow be contacted by Mont Blanc and them knocking on his door saying, hello, why are you recreating our ink, mate? Writing, pretty smooth. Couple of skips here and there, but nobody writes this fast, I think. Um, in all, actually a smooth nib, a pleasant writing experience. I can't say anything else. Not the wettest writer, but it is definitely properly tuned. It's not overly dry, so it's not a gusher, but it's quite nice. Now, given the price of these pens, I don't mind pushing those nibs quite a bit. And as you can see, you can squeeze out some line variation. Just always be careful, they're not advertised as flex nibs, right? And finally, reverse writing is possible and turns it from, I would say, a pretty good fine to an extra fine. I would almost call this a medium. It's a, it's a pretty wide line, in my mind, for a fine. Wow. It's a pretty fine line, in my mind, for a fine. So poetic. Okay, here we have the hooded nib. Um, Same ink, same paper of course, I did that on purpose. This one has more feedback. It's also drier. Line variation, not so much. This nib is stiffer. I'm pushing it pretty hard there. I would not necessarily recommend that. And there you have it. So, let's see what I like about these pens and what I don't like about these pens. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Jinhao 51A with the hooded nib and the exposed nib or the other way around, I don't know, I can't look through these caps, I do not have x-ray vision. What do I like about it? Well, the Chinese pens, some people love Chinese pens, some people hate Chinese pens. At the end of the day, it's a simple story. They're inexpensive pens. Five bucks for a pen, yeah, well, 350 euros, um, 690 euros. 1600 euros. I mean five dollars is really not that bad is it? So I mean there is that. It's an affordable pen. Easy to buy, easy to give away, etc. The most important thing to me at the end of the day is not the design, is not how the pen feels, is not if it has a Lamy type converter or not. It's how it writes. And I will say this. All pens write. They write properly, and I've seen pens that don't write properly. I've seen pens that cost more than 10 times as much as this that don't write properly. I've seen pens that write that cost 100 times as much as this, and they don't write properly. So in that regard, that's, an, that's for sure an issue. The pens write as you would expect, which is nice. And I personally prefer the non-hooded nib. In general, I'm not really a fan of hooded nibs because that's the fun part of the fountain pen, so why hide it? Um, but, you know, there is that. So I like it. It's a simple pen. It's affordable. Five bucks for a pen that writes cartridge converter supplied. I mean, what, what more could you wish for? Things I don't like so much, it's not a Parker 51. It doesn't have the same feeling. Converter rattles a bit, but it's not the same feeling. It feels more plasticky. It feels a bit less solid. If you ever held a Parker 51, you may know what I'm talking about. A 51 is not my favorite pen, but it is a solid pen. And it feels solid too, even though it is, strictly speaking, a type of plastic. I mean, it feels solid. These pens feel cheaper. In my mind, that's just the way it is. But you know the thing is? They're not the same price either. Parker 51, as I said, $120, $140, something in that range. 
five dollars. So you can't really complain too much. So there you have it. I don't really have much more to say. Buy one, try it out. It's not a big deal, right? I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to the lovely viewer who sent me that. I really appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to review these pens. I hope this was useful, and I gladly see you later. Bye bye.